I don't know where to start when it comes to stories. Me and my partner have been slash x slash files for at least 15 years now, and we've various done shit like ghost hunting, Rebex, rituals, the odd psychedelic, lucid dreaming, spooky tourism, Paris catacombs and Prague alchemy labs are highlights and other shit for years now. I guess the most credible thing that's happened to me was the time me and four of my friends, at least one of which is a total skeptic, were hanging out in a spooky abandoned parochial house and heard fucking ghosts. To keep it short, every window was boarded up, but local kids broke through one at the back of the house where you couldn't see from the street. But this meant walking all the way through the pitch black from that back room and through two more rooms before you got to the front hall and stairs where an onboarded skylight lit the area. So we hung out a few times, mostly so two of them could smoke weed. One time, while upstairs, we heard multiple footsteps somewhere on the ground floor. Bad news because it was either cops or junkies. There would have been no way out where we could avoid them, so we eventually decided to just try and talk our way around them, announcing ourselves as we came downstairs. But when we got downstairs, there was no one fucking there. Once we realized what was going on, we all shit ourselves and dived out the back window, never to return. Flash forward six-ish years and the building was bought and renovated as an open office space. I happened to be working there for a hot minute, mostly using it as a private office away from my house. I smell something oddly floral, sage. Turns out the receptionist was some sort of Wiccan, and often had to stay late. She told me doors would often open by themselves when it was dark and that she'd feel as if she wasn't alone. The sage was an attempt to banish. LOL it's funny what adventures we can lead some people to. Not a coincidence you ended working there and having the haunting confirmed by another. Yeah, small town Ireland didn't have much going on in my teens other than doing drugs in abandoned buildings. Glad I never got into the drug part though as most of those guys develop serious addictions. I'll write out the story of the time I avoided getting killed by the IRA in a house where an exorcism took place while looking for ghosts tomorrow night. Avoided getting killed by the IRA in a house where an exorcism took place while looking for ghosts. Jesus fucking Christ where do I start with this? Warning, I'm semi-drunk. So I'm a filmmaker. Sorta. Haven't made anything decent in a while. I studied in Ireland, not far from where I grew up. One day I was out filming shit for B-roll in the countryside a decent walk out of town. Guy, let's call him Jack, pulls up as I'm walking home, gives me a lift into town. Nice guy, probably in his 50s, fascinated by filmmaking in the thing I'm filming for. I think nothing of it, just small town banter. Two years later I've graduated and I'm enjoying my unemployed life. He sees me on the street, approaches me, reminds me who he is, fucking says, I'm part of a paranormal investigation group, would you like to make a documentary about us? Fuck. Yes. I start going to his group's meetings, hiding my slash x slash power level the whole time, getting to know everyone. Learn a few interesting things, turns out ghost hunters are as territorial as full-on gangs. No one agrees what exactly ghosts are or how they communicate. Everyone is a different type of eccentric. One woman in this group was a French cougar that the other female members didn't like, important later. Let's call her Nikita. The head of the group, Dylan, is a seasoned veteran and quite obese, also relevant. Another member, Jane, is a sort of pseudo-wiccan and one of the sensitives of the group, by this point I'm a fairly experienced ceremonial magician slash occultist, but keep this to myself, and it turns out she's been doing rituals in the woods near my house for years now. So I do some investigations with them, pick related, none of which yield decent evidence. In fact, pick related was a literal scam I saw unfold. Wiccans would caretake this castle when it wasn't in use and had one of their own psychics join our investigation, where she led us and our meters under a radio tower to set them off. Anyway, the Kanin ghost house. You can google this to clarify it but, this is an evil dead tier of abandoned cottage in the middle of fucking nowhere, right on the Northern Ireland border where a legit exorcism took place in the 1920s. 
Lots of local legends surround it, but it's a legit spooky place and the exorcism 100% took place there. I got a tip on it from a deny friend and possible ex-criminal called Brian about it once I told him I was in a ghost hunting group. Kick related. Brian was usually a very jovial guy, but he was dead serious when he told me, make sure you fucking stop by the nearby plowboy call the local police station to tell them you're going there at night, the implication being that some IRA splinter group would likely fucking kill us for snooping around their territory at night. And that sounds hyperbolic, but it's true. There are still all sorts of IRA gangs floating around the border towns, using different words to cash weapons, drugs, or whatever else, and the words around the Canaan ghost house were no different. Growing up near the border, I took that very seriously. So I relay this to the gang, please, fucking lord, tell the cops slash pub before we go there at night, after we do a daytime recon. Now, no surprise that this didn't happen. Because Lothem Nikita was trying to fuck all the men in the group and the girls didn't like her, they all needed excuses when it was her birthday in order to not go. Everyone was sick or had another engagement all of a sudden. But no one in the group was quite sure who was on whose side, so not everyone was told we were planning on an investigation at night in the Canine Ghost House. Everything was last minute, few people knew what was going on, and all of a sudden, me, Jack, Ellen and Jane were driving at night to a spooky fucking house in IRA territory, with no one else in the group knowing where we were. And needless to say, the guards weren't informed either. It's the middle of the night, we meet in my town, and it should take about 1 hour 30 minutes to get there. Jack is following Google Maps, but someone, who knows who, made a barricade in our path. Jack has to slam the brakes to not smash into it, then tries to go around by a different back road route. But Jack is fucking retorted and doesn't realize Google Maps corrects itself to your GPS, attempting to lead you back down the same route. We wind up at that same barricade twice before he figures out what's going on. By the time Jack figures out a decent path, his speedometer has literally broken. Now he's doing twice the limit on really hilly, windy back roads, at midnight, gaining air off each hump. And because Ellen is obese, the car slams into the road after each hump, sending sparks flying each time. I am white knuckled the whole way, shitting myself that I'll die in a horrific wreck in the middle of nowhere, looking for fucking ghosts. Finally we get there. 3 plus hours late and at the beginning of a rainstorm. We park the car in a little clearing on this back road, cross over, then scramble down a ditch to the path in the above picture. We stay for less than an hour. Surprise surprise, no fucking ghosts. We're all cold, tired, not finding shit, we want to go home. As we walk back up the path to our car, two. Other. Cars. Cool. Fuck. And. Block. Hour. Path. By now it is close to 1 a.m. on a back road in Bali Bollocks. There could be no one else in this car but IRA Tufts. I start praying to the sweet Buddha that they don't kill us as they exit their two fucking clown cars and start walking towards us. They're all tough guy teenagers trying to pretend they're out drinking when they walk right up to us and act surprised we're there. I tell Jack, just fucking say we're shooting a horror film, they won't believe us if we say we're ghost hunters. What does Jack say seconds after I tell them this? Hello, we're ghost hunters. By now, I assume this is the end. The Yamnare boys start trying to coax us back into the house for cans. And fucking Jack, who is driving in case you forget, is about to take them up on it until I say, just get in the fucking CR. Even when we do finally get in the car, the dick doesn't take off immediately. The two RA cars that pulled up have fully tinted windows, but the glow of each driver's joint slash fag is giving them away and revealing that they're watching us. Finally, fucking finally, Jack takes off and we head home at a reasonable speed. To top it off, we're so fucking late that the takeaway is closed. I get them to drop me off at my house and I never talk to them again. TLDR, don't go ghost hunting in gang territory because you'll be the one haunting the building in the end.
I don't lurk or post much on Slash X Slash at all and haven't in years, but here's an experience that happened to me earlier this week and last night. It's late Thursday night and I've got a large presentation for my department tomorrow, but can't sleep. Not even stress, I just can't get tired and it's already 2 a.m. I've got to get up at 7 so this is already a problem. I decided I should go out and exercise a bit to burn off some energy, just to walk around the apartment complex. I know the night guard so it's not a big deal if we run into each other anyway. I start stretching and note to myself this is going to have to be brief because it's humid as shit and I don't want to have to re-shower or wake up even earlier to do it in the morning. It's worth noting that the complex is dotted with streetlights, albeit dim. I start taking a leisurely walk around the complex and it's mostly quiet save a possum that scurries off under one of the bushes. A few of the lights are out which isn't that big of a deal, but then I catch something out in the distance in the direction I'm talking. It's this black sort of mass around where one of the street lights isn't working and the others are a bit duller. No big deal, it's pretty dark so it's probably just a gap in the bushes or something I think and keep walking. I get closer and it's very clearly a figure. Think maybe it's the night watch guy taking a smoke while on patrol so I wave at him. No response. Whatever figure he's got his back turned and keeps going. A feeling of general unease hits me, that feeling when it's like a rippling wave of shivers crawls up your body when I get closer. I'm about 15 yards or so away from it now and it's human shaped, but clearly not a person and it's rippling like a heat wave. At this point I feel the color drain from my face and tears start to form in my eyes. I take a step back and sort of square off. I always tear up when I'm scared. I don't know why. Anyway it stands there for a moment under the dead street lamp near some hedges sort of swaying back and forth. I'm not thinking of anything really, my mind is totally blank, I'm in instinct mode and I don't understand what this thing is. It's a lanky figure that's darker than anything should be in this area and it sort of looks like it's warping the space around it. I take a few steps back with my eyes locked on it and the streetlight near where I'm standing flickers and it sort of rushes at me flailing these elongated mist like arms, almost like tendrils and it's fast as hell. We're talking at close the distance in maybe a second and a half or so. The arm bows like it's trying to wrap around me, but it's close now and I throw a jab at it with my leading hand and a follow-up hook, grab the back of its head, and knee it. It feels spongy and it stinks like low tide and cheap perfume. At this point I'm now in full sprint past it and throw open the door for my apartment. I spent the rest of the night with all the lights on and thankfully the meeting the next morning ended up being cancelled. Really fucking weird and spooky, but it's over and I don't pay it much attention. None of the I'm feeling watched or impending dread feelings I was expecting, though I start transitioning moving from room to room with a light always on at night. The second event came last night and I'm doing another walk at night because I'm having trouble sleeping and generally not paying much attention to things since I'm a bit stressed on some bullshit I'm going to have to deal with today, Sunday. I eventually snap out of it and realize where I am. About the same spot and I look up from the ground and there the thing is again in the same spot about the same distance from me as last time. Just sort of jerking around. I feel this fear swell up inside me looking at it again, but that fear is rapidly replaced with anger. I'm not sure why or how to explain it, but it's a blinding rage I haven't ever felt before. I throw my arms up and approach it. You wanna do this again? It sort of contorts its form as if it's looking behind itself at me and then it sort of flails around like the top of its body is rubber and sprints off in the opposite direction towards some hedges. I chase it but it just fades out before it reaches them. I walk past it and mutter to myself, that's right bitch, before finishing my walk. I'm generally not a confrontational person and the only fights I've ever had were when I was taking karate in high school. I have no clue what this thing is or what its significance may be or if it was causing those strong emotions in me or not, but it was fucking weird. I don't know what I should be feeling right now exactly as I type this, but what I do feel is general apathy. A dullness like it's just another brick in the wall, like it's no big deal. That's I guess the most disturbing thing of all to me. I just don't really care. 
Thanks for sharing Anon. Could you find any pictures or anything which would match what you're redescribing? I see a lot of stories in which people describe similar things but cannot really visualize it in my head well. I'm not sure what I'd look for. My phone is apparently range banned so I can only offer an MS Paint Doodle, but this is about as close to what I saw as my artistry can get. Just imagine the edges being more faded and smooth and the whole thing rippling like something you'd see in the distance on a hot day. I'll see if I can run into it again tonight, I guess. My mother is from Colombia in South America and let me tell you, those people have some pretty freaky stories and superstitions that they still live with even in these modern times. It's pretty awesome and I've even seen proof of it. She was born around 1964 on the outskirts of a city really close to the jungle named Materia. Her mom gave her to another family that was childless when she was like two years old. The adoptive father loved her dearly but apparently his wife never liked her. He died when she was about nine and that's when her adoptive mom went into full bitch mode. They lived in a literal hut of straw and wood and they would have to actually go to a well about a mile away to bring back water for whatever reason. This one time my mom was out doing whatever third world girls did for fun and came back in. Her adoptive mom waited until about like 11 at night when my mom was gonna go to bed. They shared the one after her adoptive dad passed to tell her that she wasn't going to get into bed dirty as she was without taking a bath first. So she sent my mom to the well. My mom, nine years old, walked a mile basically through the jungle in the dark with nothing but a candle on a holder and a towel to get to this well to take a bath. The well was surrounded by a little wooden pagoda, I guess to stop shit from falling in and whatnot, with a metal tub on it for the villagers to bathe in. My mom had brought up one bucket and poured it in a tub, then pulled up another and poured it in. As she was pulling up the third bucket she heard three knocks on the wood in front of her. She looked up really fast and scared to see what had made the noise. What she saw was a smallish man with greenish skin, long moldy black hair, jagged yellow teeth and a really long face. She saw looked up and saw him, he chuckled, and she dropped the bucket and ran the fuck home as fast as she could with only the moon as her source of light. She got back and her adoptive mom whipped her for leaving the towel and candle holder. Fun fact, my mother first told me this story when I was like seven and had a nightmare about being chased by a long-faced, long-haired green man. Apparently he's a known entity, she said he was called the Muin, I spent years since then looking for information about him. Like in the mid-2000s I found a Spanish article online about a girl that saw him around then. Very recently, I've seen more information, but he's referred to primarily as the Mohun. Here's the relevant info to this story. In some legends, it is a satellite being who steals and rapes young women and lives in a cave-like grotto in the bottom of the Great Chungle Rivers where he keeps his female captives. In others, it is depicted as the spirit of an old Indian. Brawny and stout, with a terrifying grin and stare, with larger than human stature and proportions, who steals fishermen's bait, catch our nets, and has the power to change shape into a cat-like beast. Other legends describe the Mohan as a big-headed Indian, with short legs and fish fins on his back, and very brown. He is portrayed as an extremely hairy being with a very treacherous personality who dwells in the backwaters and is feared by many people. He also causes mischief for young girls who come to wash clothes in the water. Be a schizo. Forget to take meds. Go walking into the woods. Hear the sound of a twig snapping behind me. Shit, it's a skinwalker. Desperately run home in fear for my life. Make it home safely completely out of breath. Log on to to slash x slash to tell my story. What do most people who drop the word schizo haven't actually seen a schizo in real life? I worked at a hospital and that included a nearby mental health facility. Some of those people are fine just mentally worked up from circumstance or drugs but some are seriously schizo. 
I saw a teenage girl who was like 5 foot tall and like 100 pounds, but she had like 6 separate personalities and one of them gave her retard strength and killed a girl in her high school with one punch to the face and got it put away. Schizos are living examples of how little we know about the human brain. I don't drink and I've never taken anything stronger than ibuprofen in my life. I grew up hunting with my foreign friend, and I am way more comfortable in the woods than in an urban city. It's the fact that experienced, God-fearing or otherwise rational outdoorsmen encounter things like skinwalkers that leads me to want to understand it. So basically suck it showed. Now for the old lady story, told to me from a close friend of my dad's. Dad's friend as a kid in the 60s moved into an old house in rural Kansas with his parents and three sisters. Everyone in the house starts losing their shit and getting feelings of being watched. The youngest sister claims that she is seeing an old woman sitting in a chair in the room she shares with one other sis. Dad's friend goes in that bedroom to grab his sister's coat one day, and gets a very cold shell from the closet freaks out. The parents are worried, call their church for help. The pastor comes goes to the room, comes back with some serious heebie-jeebies, calls a priest friend of his from the city. Priest tells him to find a blind person from anywhere, and have him ready at the house when he arrives. Blind dude gets picked up by the pastor and father, Priest arrives holds some kind of ritual with the family, candles and holy water asking that God grant them the sight to see the truth. Sends the blind man upstairs to the room. Blind man came running down, he saw the old woman sitting in the chair knitting. He also looked and saw his skeleton's arm holding a shovel coming out of the closet. That's when he noped out and ran past it to get downstairs. Turns out the house was sold to the parents from the children of the old lady. She was murdered like 10 years prior and the killer was never found barely investigated. Two other families had moved in and out of the house before my dad's friend had moved in. I always wondered why that one apparition had taken the form of a skeleton though. I've got like three stories, nothing too special, really short that I haven't shared online. I remember once as a kid, my dad driving past the cemetery down the street from our house, kind of late at night. I saw something like 11 faint glowing silhouettes of something that looked like children dancing around a stone I would climb on top of in the graveyard. I remember going down there the next morning to see why I saw this or what I saw. Looked down around the stone and found out that it was actually the grave for 11 kids. My bad ghost children for using your gravestone as a playground of sorts. It had a nice ornamental bowl of fruits on top made of stone, can you blame my childish brain? Second thing I remember, I woke up in the middle of the night prior to the event that was about to occur. I remember staring at my closet where my toys were stored in a tote box. For some reason one of my electronic toys went off and sprawled my closet with a rainbow of colors and it started saying one of its lines or playing whatever music it had to play. I was really young, can't remember. I just remember being too tired to get up and check it out. Never happened again. So not really an electronical problem within the toy, but it was something I guess. The third story is just a weird thing I saw around the age of 14, creeped me out. I was hanging out with my cousin and another friend, walked out of my room to use the bathroom, and saw a shadow with long hair run into the bathroom I was going to use. I saw this from the mirror my family placed in the living room, I stood there for half a second or so looking in the mirror to see if I could catch more movement, decided to nope my way back to my cousin and friend. Sometime like months or weeks later my dad got locked in the underside of the house. Basically somehow, the door to the underside of the house swung closed and somehow locked one of those latches that had to land in the hole to semi-lock or secure the door. No one did this to him, we were all inside the house when this happened, so it was quite surprising to hear that happen. I never equated it to ghosts, but my dad always believed that house to be haunted. I guess I did as well considering that I saw what looked like a little girl run into the bathroom before I even made it to my living room to round the corner to that bathroom. A few decades ago my grandmother worked in an old people's home. It was a known haunted location which comes to no surprise given the amount of people who die of old age there. The staff had subtle rituals when a resident died. My grandmother would always open the window and then make the call. It wasn't the nicest of places to work at. The home was even burgled one night. 
a few individuals attempted to sneak into the home and steal a television. The home hired a new member of staff who was told early on she'd probably experienced something unusual or creepy while working there. She laughed it off and regarded the warning as a bit of light teasing. One day she was giving each resident a cup of tea in the main living room. After noticing a woman wearing all white, she went back to the kitchen to ask for another cup as she was a cup short. The member of staff in the kitchen explained that she wouldn't need another cup of tea. The new girl insisted so she got a new cup and entered the living room. To her surprise the woman in white was nowhere to be seen and the girl was puzzled and shocked. Other members of staff had to explain to her that the woman she saw was not a resident. At least a physical one. This apparition of a woman wearing all white was a consistent sight in the home. The home was subject to some poltergeist activity too. My grandmother and another member of staff entered a resident's room after he had recently passed. They were merely cleaning up. At some point they stood and looked at each other during some kind of minor dispute. During the conversation my grandmother noticed a moving cup on a shelf behind the other staff member. She was so shocked she couldn't speak and warn her colleague. For some reason she knew what was going to happen. The cup then immediately flew off the shelf, flying across the room, and smashed. It narrowly missed my grandmother's colleague. It's not a cryptid or spirit story, but I do have one I can give you guys. A brief background though, in Ocala, Florida there is a legend or myth called the Rainbow Men. It sounds like the San Franciscan tree, but it's just a group of hippies that live out in the national park slash woods slash swamp that are less tree huggers and more a band of rapists, druggies, murderers, maybe cannibals. So more like an LA treat or just an average group of Florida men. About two years ago I'm talking with some shooting buddies online and bemoaning the fact that I have nowhere to practice three gun. One of them gives me some GPS coordinates for a spot he's used in the past when he lived here and I decide I should check it out because why the fuck not. At this point I had not heard of the legend so I got myself strapped with gear, my AR, a 12 gauge, and a revolver because I can't shoot a semi-auto handgun for shit. I loaded up along with some water, rations, orientation gear, etc. in a backpack and attack vest, pile in the car and head out to the state park where I strap up and start marching in the woods. It's not much, but I eventually do find it and enjoy fucking around setting up and doing target practice. First time in a while I've been able to use my shotgun. The kick feels great, but I know I need to get a shorter barrel. When it's about 6 and the sun will start setting soon so I pack up and start heading back covered in sweat and mud and stinking of B.O., gunpowder, and blood. It's been a great day and I'm enjoying my hike back now that I'm a little lighter after having spent a good $200 or more in ammo so I'm thinking to myself and not paying too much attention as I walk through a ravine about 10 feet deep because fuck climbing it. This is when I hear a rustling and immediately snap out of it, shoulder my rifle and insert the last remaining 30 RD I've got in it and start scanning my surroundings. Contrary to what you may think Florida doesn't have very many large land predators dangerous to people save the swamp panther which is sadly near extinct, but it's not impossible that one may be stalking me. I keep walking and I hear something again, scan, nothing. Then I check the ravine top. It's an old yuppie looking couple in white and pink and all manner of vomit pastel and neon mixes crouching down and watching me like it's fucking TES or something and they want a stealth bonus. I just do what comes natural without thinking and wave while saying, hi there, how y'all done? Trails that way and point at my heading and keep on walking. The man screams, run run, and they book it in the opposite direction. I don't think much of it, but when I describe the situation to a coworker when she asks what I did for my three day vacation she laughs and says they probably thought I was a rainbow man. This is my story. Pardon my subpar English as it is not my first language. Be me. 18 years old, completely infatuated with a 10 tense woman of 34 years old, cousin of a girl I became good friend in college. 
Some beers, some drugs, lots of talk and I got to kiss her. Was awesome, but I knew that it was nothing serious. I really want that girl. Search for old rituals on some obscure website. Actually sacrifice a lamb, WTF is wrong with me. The girl is now completely in love with me. She basically expends all she got buying gifts and plane tickets for us to travel to a lot of different places. She is contracting debt for this. I say to her that this is not necessary. She just says, there's something in my mind that keeps telling me to. Let's enjoy. One day we are together in a room in a small beach town. Things start to fly into the walls. Windows and doors slam again and again. Poltergeist level shit makes my butthole go poo poo. Me and her are hugging each other not knowing what to do. We hear a voice in the bathroom, sounds like a fucking animal. I am not brave enough to go check. We both dream about the same thing, a creature that crawls and is completely black and have talents. The creature demands payment. In the next months things got crazier and crazier. For example, me and her sacrificed another lamb to see if the things would stop. It didn't. She discovered a breast cancer. I got possessed. A priest had to come and pray while my whole family was holding me to the bed. Strangest thing ever. It seems like you are in another room inside your own mind. Oh, and holy water burned me like napalm. I was with a burning scar to the forehead made solely from holy water. It disappeared with time. Well. She didn't want me anymore, told me she wanted to cure herself and change her life completely. I felt bad, but was the right thing to do. I stopped using old drugs and stopped drinking. I reconnected with God and every day I pray for protection. This is my story. I do not have proof of anything that I am telling, none that I can think of, at least. Also this is the first time that I tell this story to anyone besides my inner circle of friends. Once again. Sorry about the bad English. Mimi, Hapa? Visit the Japanese side of my family every few years. It's really expensive though, so it's usually weddings and the very demanding Shinto Buddhist funeral obligations. Old mountain family with a private graveyard. The elders are really old, so I try to upkeep the graveyard. Lost a lot of family fighting for the Shogunate and the Shinsengumi during the Civil War. They are buried in a separate grave to memorialize their sacrifice. Be cleaning the graves one day, and watching hands because Japan has spiders that'll give you Viagra cock if they bite you, and large as fuck hornets and fire ants. Friendly Danuki that lives nearby comes for his cucumber I've been feeding him. Family thinks they're pests but fuck they're adorable. All of a sudden he gets really angry and hisses. I see a weird fox with mange that he's staring at. Tanuki is having none of it, and takes his cucumber and runs, which is weird because he normally doesn't even give a fuck about people and bikes. I feel bad for the fox and debate on finding a cucumber for it. Immediately notice fox is being weird. It's running around the edge of the graveyard and not touching it, like there's a fence. Graveyard ends at the forest where I decided it's too miserable to keep weed whacking onwards. Just really strange, seeing this fox running around the corners and treating the plots as hot lava. Eventually fox gives up and keeps running back to the forest but turning around and looking at me. I'm 99% sure this is a horror story in progress, but I have an hour of daylight left so I say fuck it and follow the fox. Fox leads me on a merry chase through the forest, it's actually quite beautiful. Get to a clearing and hear a pig squeal. Tell the fox I'm not fighting a goddamn boar with a rake and turn around. Go back down the path, and the fox is getting more and more frantic. Don't care, giant pissed off pig. Fight your own spooky battles you bitch. Cool story bro. I wrote this earlier tonight, this stuff counts. They are not that telepathic, more a hive mind. Pedo is optional as is participation in other ritual abuses but it is encouraged for fun and profit to be the privileged in the grand game. I've met more than just several. I've been tutored by, their kind. Vampires. Everything exists as food for something else on this planet. Why do you think you're special? 
There are quite a few species too. The population is in the millions and the human souls and their souls have quite different origins. And, having conversed with a shape-shifting alien who put on a demo one night and did a 100 impersonations of past lifetime forms. This is how he says it works. Everything has a neutral center from where the two ways of energy flow, of the universe, comes and goes. It's the source of the sun's energy. John Keeley will tell you more. Remember the golden rule, for every action there is an opposite and equal reaction. Everything has a neutral center. A rock, a planet, a galaxy, every animal. Anything that has a form of its own. Its neutral center connects it to the Akashic or the Ether. Aka Firmament slash Quintessence. This is a different way of looking at the energy forms we call rocks and animals. When people stop producing their own energy it is because they are dead. The secret to creation lies in the waver form. Walter Russell. Alien souls, waveforms, are of a different frequency to humans and energy will travel between the two when there is a differential between the two. It's how batteries work. It's how the electric universe works. Nothing religious about it. Nineteen eighties, my dad is in his twenties. Hiking the West Coast Trail alone. Explores a bit and goes off the trail to follow an overgrown trail. Encounters a large clearing, walks about five meters into it before he stops dead in his tracks. A wall of spiritual energy blocks him, he is unable to walk further into the clearing. He looks around, then looks forward again only to see an old native woman in simple, but traditionally painted linens. The woman explains a battle happened here, and the remains are sacred. He can step no further. He blinks and the woman is gone. Turns around and continues his hike. Only a paranormal story he had to tell, part of me believes he may have been on shrooms or something when it happened, or he made it up. I had the usual childhood, more of a knowing of things only adults knew. Then I moved to Australia aged 8 and began to hear footsteps in the night down the hall. On another farm we owned awoken with chains rattling in the garage right outside the window. Next morning was told some guy committed suicide that way years ago. A UFO flew 20 feet above my car for 10 miles after a date in school. Saw many UFOs when out hunting at night. Some coincidences surrounding some of these sightings like the one hovering above a house for 5 minutes while I was watching in the nowhere outback. 21 years and 9 months later, I invited this full-blown spirit talker into my house for her 21st birthday. She was born in that house. The dates matched. Nothing really far out, just the usual stuff. The wife had an encounter with a three-foot troll when she was young and lived at the foothills of the ranges. We used to hunt at night together and got pretty rattled by something trying to break in the car while we were having a quickie behind a shearing shed 20 kilometers from nowhere. I went soft so fast the condom slipped off inside her. But. The fun started in 1988 when I built a three-story pyramid house. Yeah here I am part Cherokee, living in the outback in a pyramid house. I could elaborate on the wife levitating off the bed taking the blankets with her and me shivering. Or the Maori spirit that came with the NZ Pinius Alati poles the hose is built with. Doors opened, in the middle of the day with the wife, two kids and myself watching someone enter making all the sounds but no one was there. The youngest had a friend who told her things of magic. So she nearly burnt the house down making an altar of fire. Six years old. The next morning after all matches and lighters were removed, and incidentally, used up the wood the night before too, awoke to a blazing fire going with not a match in sight and we were all still in bed. The wood was from our wood heap as it was truss wood cut up. Not only did they get the wood, but they lit the fire some other way than I know of. This happened again 12 months to the day later September. Then the men in black materialized in our bedroom in about 1996. It really freaked the wife out. Two of them all dressed in black robes with hoods and, 
Well yes that's what she saw, red beady eyes. After a second or two into her piercing scream they disappeared. Another one showed up about 12 months later yup, yeah, September again. This one was neat. He could shape shift. Required monthly regenerations or he old mained out in just seconds. According to his 18 years old G slash F. I didn't see that display. He was 26 and for all intents and purposes literally could have been the smartest man on earth having the ability to remember his every lifetime throughout the universe. Not telling the alien tech as I went on to market some of it and today it's a 100 million industry in growing every day, but that's another story. The wife's cousin came to stay one summer and she slept in the top room. She survived four nights but after something awoke her sucking on her toes must be the invisible man and she wasn't having a bar of it anymore. I have many more stories and each of these can be elaborated upon with quite thrilling details. At no time was I ever scared. Maybe the hair standing up, but that's just electricity from excitation. We still have the policy that if they live in our state we say nothing of what happens in our house. Some people think we must be weird. But I'd say we have the usual eventful family life. I would say that we study by living it, phenomena most only seen in the movies, and it has been absolutely enchanted to learn this way. Everyone should try it. I have a story that I posted in a thread of my own, but the thread wasn't getting any traction, so I'll post here. This story was told to me by my grandfather. I can't tell you guys the exact year, but my grandfather implied that this story took place when he was a boy, so that would put this story in the late 40s or early 50s. My grandfather was born and lived in the rural parts of the Deep South. His great uncle lived down the road from him. Back in those days, the family kind of lived all in the same general area and knew each other's business, and were involved in each other's work. At this time, my family were farmers and moonshiners. As such, they owned the only car in the area. And when I say, they owned, I mean as a collective. All of the extended family, brothers and uncles, etc., used that car. My grandfather and his extended family lived on a road that they owned basically both sides of the road for what seemed like a couple miles. Meaning that my grandfather and his family would live in one house, surrounded by their fields and woods, going one-eighth of a mile down the road, and my great-great-grandfather would live there surrounded by his property. Go another several hundred yards down the road and one of my grandfather's aunt and uncle would live there, etc. This would go on for a couple miles. I say all this to explain that their road was infrequently traveled by car, as my grandfather's family owned the only car in the area and his extended family was practically the only family down that road for miles. If there was nothing to do, either on the farm or in moonshining, my grandfather's great uncle would sometimes walk about 5-10ish miles down the road to the nearest, busy, road for cars. He would just loiter around the intersection at the regional church and wait for cars to pass by, to talk to the people in the cars. At this time, you would maybe get a car an hour, on a busy day. On to the main story, one day, at dusk, my grandfather's great uncle had to use the bathroom. There was no indoor plumbing, so he had to go to the outhouse down by the edge of the woods. As he was making his way down the path, and since it was nearly dark out, he noticed a light traveling through the woods. He said that the light was moving towards him, kind of bobbing as it made its way through the woods. Though the motion of the light would have resembled a person walking through the woods holding a lantern, he knew that it wasn't the case. The light was blue, and it didn't light up the surrounding area, it was just a light unto itself. This strange sight scared him, so he froze in place, not too far from the outhouse at the edge of the woods, his eyes transfixed on the light. He said that the light came out into the open. The light, almost a foot in diameter, started to bob more violently. It almost resembling a bouncing ball, though not ever touching the ground, just a violent bobbing. He said that he knew, somehow, that he was going to die soon. He didn't know how or the day, but that he would die in the very near future. I don't know how he knew, just that it was a bad omen. 
He told his family of the light that he saw, and that it was a bad omen, for telling his death. He also said that he was in fear for his soul, and that he was sure he would go to hell if he died. The very next Sunday, he went to the regional church that I mentioned was about 5 to 10 miles from his house. He confessed his sins and was baptized that day. The Saturday after he was baptized, about a week and a half after the sighting of the light, he was walking home from the intersection. He had spent that Saturday, as he had many lazy Saturdays, hanging out at the intersection and talking to passers-by. Later that afternoon, he decided to return home. He was making his way down the winding road that my family lived on, and he was run over by a car, in a curve in the road. As nobody came to the door of any of his relatives, his killers were never caught. His body was found by my family when they went out searching for him, when he didn't return home that evening. TLDR Grandfather's great uncle sees a blue light at the edge of a field, near dusk. Blue light is a bad omen. Grandfather's great uncle knows he will die soon. Goes to church to get right with God. Run over by a car, the very next Saturday. Spooky, I have a similar story that was told to me by an uncle of mine when we were visiting family in North Carolina. He's my dad's oldest brother. I was about 15 at the time and a complete fedora tipping atheist faggot. But I still thought it was interesting back then. Dad and uncle were hanging out talking about their childhood while I sat around reading, occasionally listening to them. Over a couple of hours, uncle got a bit drunk and said something like, Man, do you remember those fucking lights? It was very sudden, so I couldn't help but look up from my book and dad kinda glanced over at me and tried to wave it away. Then uncle pointed at me with his beer and said, You never told him. So the story as he told it was that he and my dad were hunting in the forest when they were teenagers. It was pretty early and dark, especially under the trees. Suddenly, they saw these three lights zip past them from behind, heading forward. They look at each other like what the fuck is that and watched as the ball stopped about 10 feet away from them. Then they started bouncing in the air like basketballs and both of them felt sick as shit. Uncle had to help my dad walk home because he was almost passing out. When they both got back they told my grandpa and he got really quiet and took them to some dude. They called the doctor, but who was just some dude who gave out teas and herbs and stuff. Dad was really fucking ill by that point and the doctor said, if you hadn't brought him in, he would have died in three days. He told them to light some candles or something and to say some weird prayers, and he said he'd take care of the rest anyway. After that dad was fine but uncle said the reason he brought it up was because one of the neighbor's kids had told his parents that he saw the same lights. But he never got sick so nobody thought anything of it. But just a few days before we showed up he was fucking strapped by lightning keck. Fucking weird story. Oh, this reminds me too. I had a weird thing with a lot of lights not too long ago. I remember telling a friend immediately after it happened, and I dug up our conversations and it apparently happened January 16, 2019. So if any of you guys in Northern Illinois were around on that day and remember a lot of weird lights, I'd like to hear it. I was driving home from work, which for me ended at like 7 p.m. I think. Dark out. I live close-ish to an airport but planes are still rare. Once every few days, but as I was driving home I kept counting lights in all different directions. I counted seven of them. I turned onto one street and would see three in the air and I'd turn into another street facing a different direction and would see more. Even on days where we'd get multiple plane rides, they were never that close together. My friend suggested it sounded military. The US is fucked and I hate our government so I don't have a hard time believing there's all kinds of government shit we don't know about. But at the same time I never heard anyone discussing it, either. So I wonder if it was a specifically paranormal situation with me, pick related. I send it to my friend that night because I could see two more lights out my bathroom window immediately after coming home. Worth noting, I do not live anywhere near any military base. But shortly before COVID, I did see a parade of black government vehicles on my way to the gym once. So maybe weird stuff goes on where I live that people don't pick up on. Guess I post my experience here since I'm bored. Be me, 26 years old. Live a normal and uneventful life. 
Sure, there's some experiences with ghosts but didn't affect me much. Aunt suddenly died one day so I went back to my hometown to help out and pay my last respects. Reach Aunt's house, instantly feel weird and heavy. I was sensitive with this kind of thing since I was a little lass. Sit and talk with family when preparations were done. Ask them how aunt died. She died of stroke they said but I noticed mom, my sis and another aunt were looking weird slash uncomfortable with each other. Didn't care much why they were acting like that. Funeral lasts for a week and in that whole week, weird shits happen. Plates, cup etc kept falling by themselves, sweet perfume can be smelt suddenly when no one is wearing perfume, crying can be heard but no one is there. Mom and others were posses. Shit, late aunt's cats were lining up and meowing slash looking at empty space. Everyone in aunt's house felt like something is always watching and also felt suffocated. Feels like the house is dark and uncomfortable inside. Family ignore all these occurrences and just concentrate on preparing the funeral thinking that all of these would go away in a week. After the funeral was done, mom decided to continue late aunt's business, making moonshine in aunt's house. Stated it was a waste to just throw a all the equipments and machinery. Whole family agree to help with the business. Weird shits didn't go away even after a few weeks after the funeral. Dad decided to call local priestess as my people believe that if the dead is still haunting slash disturbing the living, there's usually a message the dead wants to deliver. Whole family and some relatives came to observe the priestess's ritual in her house. Priestess act as the medium and was posses by dead aunt. I know it's her because she talks and acts like her. I don't know if my experiences belong here but here goes. This is the simple and really short version. Aunt died suddenly and started terrorizing her house and my family's house. We live close by. Dad called local priestess to find out why she's still haunting her and his house. Some relative came over to observe priestess's ritual. Her spirit told us she was killed by black magic. Everyone went WTF. We knew she has sued some guy who has cheated her claim to a land and sold it to someone else. She said both work together and employ witch doctors to kill her subtly. Dad was worried since he took over to claim the right to the land through court. Whole family might be kill. Family maid knows a guy can who help. The guy used to actually lived with us when he's a kid. The guy flew over and we brought to my late aunt's house the next day. He looked around and instant said that was she blind when she died, yes, she was blind before she died. He also that it actually wasn't her time to die and told us she was killed by black magic with supernatural help. Whole family went shocked. We didn't told him anything but everything he said was correct, even point out where my late aunt ghost is. He noticed some weird energies around some trees around my aunt's house and asked if he could dig around. We help him dig where he pointed and found some weird metal objects. Told us that weird negative beings are actually roaming around her house because of these metal objects. Probably for protection but he said it can be harmful to us. Dad told him he always see a large shadow at where the metal was planted. Ran for his life every single time. Cleansed the whole area and made an invisible shield to protect the family from any negative magic or beings. Nothing negative can enter the area. Told us that every good deed, charity, or prayers done, the shield gets stronger. Thank the guy profusely and he flew back. Fast forward to a few months, I was getting ready for my college graduation. It was haze season that day. One day before graduation, I wasn't feeling well. Felt like I was choke and thought it was due to the haze. Can't sleep well due to feeling of being choke. Parents were worried as I was having rough breathing. Woke up feeling very weak. I can t even swallow my breakfast. Ended up puking in the toilet without stopping. Parents quickly realized something was very wrong and decided to call the previous guy who helped us. Loose conscious as soon as I heard his voice, I didn't really black out, more like I could hear his voice but I can't control my body and my eyes wouldn't open. Suddenly started to laugh. It wasn't t me but I knew I was posses. 
Saw a really old lady in my inner conscious, inner mind? Fucking hell, I got angry. My body started trashing and laughing uncontrollably. My dad, twice my size had a hard time trying to stop my trashing. The guy told my mom to take a cup of water and he pray over it. Gave my unconscious body to drink but was refused, badly. The guy told my dad to pinch my nose so my body is forced to drink the water. He started calling my name to return my soul to my body. Suddenly my body stopped trashing but my dad saw that my eyes had gone completely white. Freak me out when dad told me. The guy told mom to put her fingers my forehead while he started praying again. After an hour, I returned back to conscious. The guy told us that it was lucky he was called quickly. If not, my soul would have drifted away from my body, taken by the old lady, said it was a malevolent spirit, and would ended up dead. Whole body aching and tired so I had no choice but to miss my graduation ceremony. Fucking ghost. After coming back, parents decided to ask the guy if he could come over to help us again. He said yes and we quickly booked a flight for him. He gave me a weird look the instant he saw me but said nothing. I decided he would tell me later. After having a moment to rest, the guy then told us that the two guys who had killed his aunt sent a lot of negative energies, spirits, jinns etc. toward the house. He noticed that I was depressed and stressed, it was due to my studies. I told him how he knew and he replied that the energy around me was very negative and so spirits were about to enter into me. He decided to communicate with the spirits inside me. Body went unconscious again and my body was vibrating suddenly. He managed to find one spirit in me and befriend it. He asks the spirit to show him if there are many spirits in the house. My head can only nod because it seems that this type of spirit can't talk human language but rather it growls and grunt. My body starts to move on its own with my eyes closed. The spirit pointed to each corner where there were ghosts etc. Some on the corner of my brother's room, some on his bed, one was on my bed and there was some on my parents' room ceiling. The guy then told the spirit controlling my body to tell him where's the spirit's leader. My hand pointed up. Ordered the spirit to bring down the leader. My body suddenly sat up and suddenly, in my conscious mind, I felt like I was pulling something down. Now my body was taken over by the leader. The guy questions the leader and was able to befriend it. Finds out an imp is the leader. Ask the imp how the other spirits were able to enter into the house area since there's a shield protecting the area. Imp told him through the food that the whole family eats. The guy then asks the imp what is their purpose for coming here. And surprise surprise, it was to kill the whole family. Turns out we were given a sacrifice. The guy then asks the imp who sent them and again, it's the two guys who cheated my late aunt. The guy decided that that was enough information and told the imp to leave my family alone and to bring the other spirits away from my family or he will destroy them. Next morning, I woke up and posed again. Brother found me just laying on the bed breathing heavily and crying. He woke the guy to try to help me to wake up. He starts praying again and calls my name. I suddenly stop crying and he starts talking to the spirit controlling me right now. A few minutes talking and shouting the spirit, it turns out this spirit is protecting me. It brought my soul back into my body and was fighting off other negative spirits. One by one, the guy found out that I had inherited my ancestors' protectors, my paternal side of the family has a long line of headhunters and priestesses and thus they have acquired a lot of spiritual protectors, mostly in animal shape. My grandmother used to be a local priestess and it seems these, things, are passed down to me. Found out I have seven guardians in me and they were not able to manifest themselves because the spiritual door inside me was closed. The guys then cleansed me and told me that with the guardians now free, I will be able to see, heard, and smell spirits, ghosts etc. but I wouldn't fear them. What the guys say is true, within a week, I saw many fucking spirits circling around my home area. One particular one was a gigantic thing with furs covering its body. Shit was weird but somehow it wasn't that scary but more odd to me. Since it was getting really dangerous for the family, 
the guy decided to put some kind of shield around each of my family. Any negative energy or spirit tries to enter into us, the energy would bounce back. Before going back home, the guy orders the protectors inside me to fight off any beings that want to hurt or disturb the family. He warns me though that I would feel fatigue every day due to the protectors using my energy to protect my family. And this for now is one of the few experiences I had with spirits and the like. Believe it or no, it all depends on you but I have experienced all these that it still feels weird talking with the protectors inside of me. I ask myself sometimes why spirits etc in Southeast Asia countries are more aggressive compared to other countries. Dude, this is a crazy story. Where are you from? I'm a little paranoid of telling my location but yeah, Malaysia. Pretty sure spirits and ghosts are more aggressive in Southeast Asian countries. There is so much I want to ask. I guess for starters, did your dad win the legal proceedings to get the land back? Was that the last you heard of the two men who killed your aunt? I'm also interested in your father's side, and what sorts of practices and beliefs headhunters and priestesses have. Were you exposed to those beliefs as a child? Were you ignorant of them? And I'd love to hear of any specific sightings you had. You mentioned a giant, fur-covered creature. Can you go into greater detail about any of these? The court case is still ongoing. Both idiots kept on reappealing the case even though they kept losing. This is like the fifth time they reappeal. They wouldn't win though, unless they bribed the judge, since they don't have any strong evidence on the claim. This case has been going on for about four years now and so I'm getting tired of it. As for those two idiots, I last saw the guy who sold the land during a wedding of a relative of mine, like two weeks ago. The guy is actually an uncle of mine, third cousin if I'm not mistaken. Since I am more sensitive to, let's say, the supernatural now, the guy smells really bad and I mean like some rotten meat or trash smell. I sometimes saw some kind of shadow following him. Maybe his guardian or something but the thing has some bad vibe around it. Never heard anything from the other guy who bought the land though. The only time I saw him was during the court case hearing. Both idiots are still actively sending weird mumbo jumbo shits toward my family so I guess they're still seething about the land claim. The head hunting and priestesses thing are mostly my people's culture. Olden days, the tribe believed that the more head you possess, the more powerful you are spiritually. The heads can be used for protecting your property, wealth etc since it is believed that the head contains the spirit of the dead. Of course, no one practices head hunting nowadays. The priestesses thing is more like the local shaman or witch doctor, curing sickness, contacting the dead, getting rid of evil spirits. My paternal grandmother loves to tell stuff about the spirit world. I mean, shit my family used to own three skeletal heads and two large urns that housed something. Every single morning, would see grandma talking to these things and offering some food and drinks. Told me it was our family's guardian or something. She used to be a priestess though so I guess it's expected that she has these things. I remember vividly that if I had a stomach ache, she would chant something, put her palm on my stomach and suddenly, my stomach didn't hurt anymore. Funny though, the spirits never bother the family even after grandma passed away. As for spirit or ghost sightings, I have too many experiences to tell. Ever since my guardian spirits were let loose, I can see and sense spirits. I could see spirits, ghosts, jinns, or whatever. The giant, fur-covered thing is just another example of a spirit I think, living near a large and old tree near outside of my house area. It doesn't notice me. Probably thought I can't see it but it's there, minding its business. Shit, even in my workplace, there are some spirits or ghosts living there. They are just minding their own business and the guardians inside me told me the spirits wouldn't bother me so I just do my shit normally without thinking much of it. A workmate of mine, someone who could also see these things, would smile subtly at me when there's something behind or near another colleague. We find it pretty funny that no one else would notice these things but us. If I could I would tell all of my experiences or knowledge I learned from the guy who frequently helps me with the supernaturals but it will be too much to write. Here's a quick sketch of the fur-covered creature Anon. It more or less looks like this.
fellow old dude here. I want to bump your thread OP. My grandma told me this story when I was just a little kid and it freaked me out back then. Nowadays it seems kind of funny but hey, it's a contribution. This is actually just a small piece from a longer story she told me, but it's the part that spooked me as a kid. Grandma is taking care of her sister who is only a year old. Their parents and older siblings are out for some reason. Darkness falls. Grandma has been seeing weird shit around the house. She leaves her sister in their room, tells her to stay in bed and not to move. There's a small window above the bed, important later. Grandma checks the entire house and is coming back down the hallway towards the room. She hears someone talking, sounds like a man with a deep voice. She rushes into the room and sees the little window over the bed is open. There's a cat sitting in the window staring at her little sister. The cat says something to the younger sister, very quickly, in a hushed whisper. Hard to hear, but it was clearly speaking. Cat looks at Grandma, meows, and slips back outside. Grandma rushes over and shuts the window. Her parents came home soon afterwards and she never saw anything weird again. I've also shared a story my grandfather told me about the haunted hills near his ranch which you can find in the archive, or else I can share it again here. It's kinda long though. Be a kid, about 13. Play hide and go seek with friends outside at midnight. I have to clarify the layout. My house was facing the street, the driveway to my house leads into the backyard and then continues to a back house. Me and friend immediately go to hide at the back house. The people who live there are gone for couple week trip. There is only doggos inside the house, locked in a room, guess who took care of them. They don't have cats, save for the wandering occasional stray. Me and friend bunker down on their front porch. It's basically just a wooden awning that goes over a cemented area with some decorative railing, pick related. Wedge ourselves between the wall of the house and some potted plants sitting on the porch. Silence ensues for tilde 10 minutes. While me and friend are sitting homoerotically close together, we notice there are all these light tapping noises. Taps on glass, taps on wood, taps on metal. Assume it's just the house creaking from temperature change or whatever. Tilder 10 minutes of tapping later. Third friend has no fucking clue where we are. Suddenly hear footsteps in the grass, sounds about 10 feet away from the cement part of the porch. Oh fuck we gonna get caught bro step, step, step. Bang. Sounds like someone punched the wooden railing on the porch. Just silence. I am now WTFing in my head. Still silence. No more tapping. No more anything. Sit up and look. Friend is at the bottom of the fucking driveway by my house. What the fuck what the fuck what the fuck? We both clearly heard footsteps in the grass and a literal knock on wood. I stand up and start yelling for my friend and look around for whatever the fuck made the noise but nothing turns up. Was extremely unnerving. Second shittier and inconclusive story. Be about 15. Walking with best bro we just broke some laws, good times. Joking around, talking about girls, whatever teenagers do. Now for the layout. In my city, there was a dirt road that's since been paved. It extended from the end of the street we lived on across a small ravine and into a relatively flat area where houses were being built. We regularly fucked with the construction site. On the way back to our house, we had to walk uphill and had a view of the backyards of multiple houses, albeit from a distance. This is a key detail. Me and friend get spooked because there's some dumb moving motion light and we are technically trespassing. After a few minutes of deliberations we decided it's definitely not a person but keep our eyes on it. As we are walking and watching this light, we suddenly see a flash of movement. Two very large dark figures quickly obscure the entire back wall of the house and the motion lights for less than an instant. It seems they crossed the yard and hopped over the six-foot wooden fence like it was a three-foot rail to a park our expert. Literally you can just imagine two nine-foot tall men-shaped silhouettes running across a large backyard in the dark and you'll have a pretty good idea of what we saw. Except they crossed the backyard in literally less than a second. We don't break our stride, but I say, bro, did you just see that? He just solemnly replies, yes. 
We walk back home in relative silence compared to our usual rowdy selves. We talk about it further and basically conclude we saw something paranormal but have no way of getting any more information about it or knowing what the fuck we actually saw. This one makes me tear up like that other Anon who tears up from feeling fear. I know I saw something paranormal and it still scares me despite it having zero backlash. And one more because it's funny. Be 15-ish. Go to golf course with best bro and my homoerotically close friend from the other story. Collect tilde 60 forlorn golf balls, we counted, that were lost to the hills. Keep them for months not knowing what to do with them. Continue going to construction site for petty lore breaking with best bro notice that the security guard is basically a lazy fat fuck that just sits in a gay little trailer all night. Realize it's time to teach this lazy shite a lesson about workplace productivity. Discover that the trailer's power outlet is just lazily plugged into a random house's backyard outlet. Bring the golf balls. Wait until midnight. Unplug his trailer and pelt it with the force of a thousand, or like twenty, golf balls. Run like fucking hell. To this day I have no idea what psychological or physical consequences we had on that man. I believe the Fae exists on some parallel plane. Essentially the Fae is the phenomena itself. Your demon slash gen slash trickster slash alien slash pan. There seems to be a difference between ghostly spirits and the things that steal people in the night or from forests though. Though both seem to either respond or need our mental energy or attention to thrive. Around 2013 I was at university and spent the summer break at my then GF's parents house. They lived closer to where I was working and they had a lot of room. Her grandpa had passed earlier on in the year but her house began experiencing your typical ghost hauntings seemingly out of nowhere. We're talking thrown objects, moving items, footsteps, moving shadows, phantom phone calls with static on the other end, full body apparitions starting to manifest themselves. I was tapped on the head and back on two separate occasions. All this started happening around May and just ramped up as summer went on. Be me hanging out with GF and GF's sister while her parents are out on a weekend trip. Hey gang let's ghost hunt this bitch. Invite a couple friends over so we have a group of five. Set up an area in the basement, turn the lights off in the entire house aside from a couple candles. Set up a recorder for EVPs and I download this app for ghost hunting. Gimmicky but has a built-in EMF detector and comes with a voice box function. It's not your typical voice box that scans through radio channels though. The theory is a spirit can manipulate the device and it will say a word like a spoke speak and spell. We begin, first 30 to 45 minutes nothing happens. EMF readings low, AK will randomly say words like cookie or shoe every once in a while but that's it. Suddenly there is a shift in the air. EMF starts to spike and the air gets heavy. Hard to explain but there was just tension in the air and felt weird. Don't say anything about it or the EMF climbing just monitor while others take turns asking questions. GF speaks up, is it just me or did the atmosphere change all of a sudden? Do you feel that? Everyone agrees. Friend stands up to go use the bathroom which is upstairs. Follow his footsteps and as soon as he reaches the hallway where the bathroom is located the app speaks, hallway. Lots of oh shits and jokes that my buddy is going to get ghosted. He returns and we continue on, yeah it is still heavy at this point. So how did you die, app speaks again like 20 seconds later, famine. You know you're dead right? Why don't you just move on, app, can't. This continues on for a short period where we're getting responses within 20 to 30 seconds. Some direct answer some others don't really make sense. Eventually it slows down and the responses stop. We've been at it for an hour so we start wrapping up. Once in a while it'll speak something, like somebody in the group banged their foot on a table and the app speaks, foot. Eventually we just go on with our night hanging out and nothing really happens after that. The house will still have little bouts of activity here and there from what I've heard, we broke up, but it slowed down. 
but when we were all there we were always talking about it and thinking about it and I think the more you focus and put energy into whatever it is just ramps up the activity sort of like a topa. I mean you have five people sitting there intently focusing on this one thing and then it just blew up all of a sudden. Years later we were staying the night for a few days. I woke up to my GF shaking and smoking a cigarette out the window. She was just scared as all hell. Apparently she woke up to the lights flickering on and off in the room and she looked over to the far corner and said there was some old man with grey long scraggly hair just standing there and then he disappeared. Like two nights later I woke up to the lights flickering on and off but I just noped and rolled over and went back to sleep. I was not going to look over and see that fucker standing there lol. I shared this last month, but I can do it again. I called out something and I think I answered, but I'm not sure by what. Be me, 14 years old or so. Obsessed with paranormal shit since I was a small child. Be in scouts, we're going to be camping in Gettysburg i.e. what is probably the most haunted place in the US. Oh fuck yes time to bullshit with some people. Fire up the early internet and navigate across a black background angel fire rotating GIF tier shit. Come across a summoning guide for shamans or whatever i.e. spirit guide trash for hippies. Haha <laughs> this is fucking rich. Print out how to summon a spirit of the night or something close to that, been a long while, because I am an edgy teen and this will totally be hilarious. Day of trip, Scoutmaster happily announces that there's a surprise, two paranormal investigators will be visiting all the scouting campsites this weekend. We sit down at twilight and they show us pictures of the TNT area in West VA, Mothman, one of my favorites. Interest immediately peaked. Giant lily pads, awkward looking heron birds, purple polluted water, etc. They close photo book and say we'll be taking photos of spirit orbs today after it gets proper dark. Ask Scout Master if I can take the guys out to an old house we saw that surprisingly wasn't locked. Say fine and to be back in an hour. We all head there and it is furnished, but free of bums. See old doll in the corner. Oh this gonna be good. Place it at center of circle. Tell everyone to sit down and begin seance, lighting candles, calling out to the spirit, cut a finger for blood, etc. Take it super seriously even though I'm laughing inside at how spooked everyone else is getting. Draws to a conclusion, cold gust of wind rips through the house causing the few candles to go out save two, which we established was a yes. Everyone screams and says they saw a white mask floating over my head before disappearing. Everyone books it out of the house, even older scouts. Stride out of house smug because I am hot shit and my ruse is the ruse of the century. Get the feeling that something isn't quite right. Family has a history of ghost sightings on my dad's side when he was a boy. Wait, maybe it actually worked. Beth UG, get a feeling I'm being watched. Get back to camp, everyone seems a little shaken but most are just talking it off. Smaller scout cries, quite literally, about it to scout master. He gives me a stern lecture and I get pulled aside by my dad who looks furious and tells me to cut that shit out. The two paranormal investigators waddle up with their cameras and say it's time to go. Feeling of being watched dissipates. We start walking the old battleground as the paranormal investigators tell us different ghost stories for the area while snapping photos, guide tells us history. We get to a rock where there are initials carved into it, clean like with a chisel. Guide that was with us tells a story that goes something like a woman who saw her husband killed on the battlefield returned from the dead and carved his initials into the stone with a burning hand and all who trace the letters are doomed to misfortune. Naturally Crybaby Scout traces it. We go on our way. More stories. More photos. Older Scout falls down and screams. His ankle is twisted, clearly broken from a rabbit hole. Crybaby Scout starts losing his mind and crying. Feeling of something watching just behind my shoulder returns. He blats about exactly what I did in the house, embellishing parts as children are wont to do. 
All adults super pissed at me because this baby can literally not hold his piss as evidenced by his stained jeans. We all head back to camp and everyone ignores me as they mull about before taps. Whatever, solitaire I guess. Older scout driven to hospital as other scouts pow wow about how I am a satanist or something. Hear weird screaming from the deep woods. Chill runs down my spine. Dad says it's just a fox, they make weird noises. Okay sure. Night goes on. Camp light seem to be fading in and out. All kerosene lamps die at near the same time. Scout master laughs and says he guesses it's lights out. We go in our tents. Try to sleep. Constantly sounds like someone is heavily sighing just outside my tent. Ignore it, clearly people messing with me I think. Wake up late to the sound of this baby scout screaming saying, she's gonna get me. Anger towards me reignited. Just like our campfire. What? Scout master himself put that out after drown, stir, drown, etc. Why is it still smoldering? Dirty cloth doll next to log near fireplace. Same as the one from the house. Scouts visible nervous. Can see something in the tree lean. Shine light. Fox sitting and watching, darts off when light hits it. Meet Dutch JPG. Next day is filled with a lot of scouts injuring themselves like the scoutmaster cutting his hand, several scouts being burned, etc. Usual stuff just more of it. Gloomy day with lots of clouds, looks like rain. Paranormal investigators return with the photos. Every single one I'm in has a large white oval orb just above my right side or behind me. Every. Single. One. That's neat, but I'm getting a bit spooked. Scout cool guy, everyone has one of these tryhards, comes over to the table and slaps the doll from the night before on the table asking who put it in his tent. No one did, obviously a low tier prank attempt. Scouts start telling investigators what I did. Oh boy here we go. They get serious and start asking me questions, are confused when I tell them about the seance in the house. Are you chumps serious? Say I should see an exorcist or something. Scout master yells at us to pack it in since it looks like it's going to be a massive rainstorm and he doesn't want to deal with that shit in the morning. We all pack it up and head home. Dad gives me a stern lecture in the car all the way back. Tells me his own stories and how his ghost was friendly and to knock off this edgy shit. Sure whatever old man. Arrive home as storm hits. Hard. Lights go out. Creaking starts in the house. From all over. Scratching from inside the walls. Family what's and mom starts getting spooked. Little sister and I remain skeptical and insist it's just more field mice again. Hear another fox call. Look out window. Fox is sitting in the middle of yard, looks up to the window the family is peeking from then trots back into the tree lean. Unpack my bags. Dirty doll is there under some clothes. LOL what 4 out of 10 revenge prank guys, apply yourselves. Night is filled with the sound of raging storms and fox calls. Have dream of a large figure in a black twisting cloak floating over my bed, white face mask like porcelain and it reaches out with long branch like fingers and points at me before I snap awake in a sweat. Go downstairs and get myself breakfast. Another gloomy day. Go to turn on light, bulb explodes. Turn on other lights, none work. Probably came back on it the night and I blew a fuse. Go to basement and flip open box, feels like something's watching again. No fuse blown or anything out of order. Head back upstairs feeling of something just behind me does not go until mom appears. Rest of the day is normal as does life. Years pass with little things here and there, start getting night terrors as I get into my late high school and early college years. Wake up with scratch marks on my body all the time. Whatever, probably just had an itch. One day I wake up and there's a mass of blood around my crotch, slept on belly. Panic and wash sheets without telling anyone. Going downstairs and look out window, 
Fox is there again watching. Not uncommon anymore, I had taken to calling him Robin over the years. Shiver runs up spine though, he's always a bit eerie. Putting sheets in wash, look in bin to see if anything else needs to go. Pulling other things out. Doll is in the bin. Feeling of not being alone is back and my hair's on end. Didn't we throw this out after that trip? After enough weird dreams and scratchy walls at night I'm tired of it and the doll is back. Maybe I did call something. Take doll out to the backyard in the woods and set it on a cut tree stump that night. Prop up umbrella over it. Apologize for disturbing the spirits. Walk backwards keeping my eye on it for a short time. Fox shifts through the tree lean, sits and watches me. Think this thing maybe just has rabies and I'm going to get bit. Just sits there as I leave. Take my sister out to the forest after a few days to do target shooting with my new bow and explore. We come across the stump and the doll is gone, the umbrella is still there. Sharing stories about my childhood with dad one day. Laughs and says if I remember waking him up all the time about the shadow lady. Don't remember ever telling him anything like that. Light over the kitchen table flickers briefly. I laugh nervously and look to the backyard scanning the tree line, but nothing is there. Still get bad dreams at times, but have lived a normal life since. Slash X Slash has a terrible character limit for posts and I didn't account for that so sorry. That's my experience though. I'm not too sure what it is or may have been or if that bogus ritual on the early net is legit or if that fox ties to it at all, but there you have it. Don't fuck with spirits and things you don't understand even if you think it's all just bullshit. Hey stalker, hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.